Hi guys, it's Connor DC from Color365 and today we're going to be showing you how to use OBS Studio with Microsoft Teams. Now there's a few reasons why you would want to use OBS with Microsoft Teams and that is to get a professional looking presentation in your Microsoft Teams meetings and also you can use it to stream directly from Microsoft Teams to your favorite streaming platforms such as Facebook Live, YouTube Live and a bunch of other ones um, but they're going to be the main two that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to download OBS Studio and we are going to download the OBS Virtual Camera Plugin. Uh, you can find these uh, on the internet just by going to I had to Google and um, we're just going to type in OBS project and it's going to be the first link and we're going to choose our operating system for me it's going to be Windows and your download will begin down here once that's downloaded you're going to run through the installer um, just click next a bunch of times and close that the second thing you're going to need was the OBS virtual camera. So you cancel that as I already have it on the system. Uh, so we're going to search for OBS virtual camera and it's going to be the top link here and it should take you to a re the resources page of OBS uh, and on here you'll see a download button, go to download. It'll download as the previous one did. So once these are on the system, we need to open up OBS Studio. And this is our main OBS window. Uh, we'll delete these as we'll get to those a little bit later. So your screen will look something very similar to this. You'll have no scenes and no sources. So I'm just going to really run down a few little things in the UI which you'll need to get to grips with. So down at the bottom here we have the scenes panel and within the scenes panel it's going to allow you to create little scenes windows uh, which you can alternate between and you can put different things um, on each of the uh, scenes windows. Each of the things are going to be called sources which you can find in the sources panel again down below. You have your audio mixer which is where you can control the volume outputs for each of your devices, so that's going to be your microphone, any of your video sources that you have, um, any any sources that has audio will show up down here, and I'm going to go through that a bit later. You have scene transitions, again, which we'll go through later. It's just a way of switching between scenes and making it look pretty. So the first thing we want to do is go to the settings tab down in the bottom right hand corner here. And we're going to make a few adjustments uh, just so we can begin using OBS more efficiently. So we're going to go to the video tab and under here we're going to make sure the output scaled resolution is set to your, uh, your native display resolution of your computer screen which in my case is 1920 by 1080p. And I'm going to set the FPS value to uh, 60. Uh, anything higher than that is really irrelevant and anything lower than that is not going to be ideal um, for what we're going to be using OBS Studio for. After we've done this we're going to go to output and we're going to make sure that the video bitrate is at 3500. I think it's set to 2500 by default. And we're going to set the recording format to MP4. Um, this basically allows us that if we do record in OBS Studio uh, basically makes it a lot easier to manage in any like third-party editing software uh, such as like Premiere Pro or Camtasia. And with that for now we're just going to click OK. So before we get started making any like integrations with Microsoft Teams uh, we're going to just quickly get to grips with the scenes and sources. So like I said a scene is going to give you different windows which you can use. So we have our first scene here, I've just named this one Camera. Uh, and I'm just going to add my webcam. So I'm going to do this by clicking on the little plus icon down in the sources here and setting video capture device. 
So a video capture device is any device which is sent in a video input to your computer, such as a webcam or a capture card or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to name this one webcam and click OK. It's going to bring up my webcam by default as that's what's defaultly selected um, in Windows at the moment. Um, and because it's my normal webcam is actually a widescreen webcam, I'm just going to change that. So under the resolution here, I'm going to select custom and select the resolution to 128 by 720. And that's just allowed it to use the maximum resolution that it can. Uh, we don't need to change any other settings here, so we'll just click OK. So you see our webcams now appeared in our broadcast window. So we can move this around by clicking and dragging. We can also snap it to different corners and scale up and down. Uh, but because this is going to be just the scene for just the camera itself, I'm going to click on it, right click, go to transform and I'm going to fit to screen. And that's going to automatically scale it to the screen size itself. So now we have our first scene created and our first source. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and just create a few more scenes just to show you how the interface works in OBS. So down in the Scenes tab down here, we're going to hit the plus icon. And I'm going to name this one Camera uh, Plus Video. And as you see, now it's selected, we have a blank canvas to work in. Um, because we're going to be using our camera again and a video, I'm just going to bring in our camera. Now the settings are already saved, so if I go back to the camera here, all of the properties, if I uh, right click on it and click properties, all of the properties of the camera are saved, which means that we can use exactly this webcam without having to make any more adjustments. By going back to our camera and video, adding the source, and the video capture device as before, and this time we select add existing and webcam. Here, OK, and we have that webcam again. So for this one, I know that I want to put this down in the bottom right corner, down here, because I want a video to show over the top. So to add a video, we're going to add another source, and we're going to select media source, and I'm going to type in Mark's video. OK, so now we know that Mark's video is going to be assigned to this one. It brings up a new window, and in here you'll see local file, and then we click browse. And we can just browse to our video, which is saved in storage videos. Yeah, so we're going to use the Globalcon 2 Ultimate Bundle video, where he just basically explains a few things about the all access pass that we uh, that we have. So I'm going to select that and hit open. And I'm also going to make sure that restart playback when source becomes active is enabled. And what that's going to do is whenever I switch to this scene, it's going to play the video from the beginning. So we don't want it playing halfway through um, or if we've used it and then we come back to it like it's it's not it's not going to be very handy. Um, if you don't want to use that, just untick it. But for the purpose of this video, I think it's going to be very useful. Everything else we can leave. We can adjust the speed if we wanted to. Um, but again, we're not going to mess with any of that sort of stuff at the moment. So we can click OK, and you can see that his video is now in our uh, scene. Uh, Where comes disappeared, and that's because it's fallen uh, underneath this layer. So we just bring that layer to the top, the webcam layer, and it brings that webcam back over the top. So Mark's video is playing in the background, and at the moment you're not going to be able to hear any audio. Uh, the way to get around this problem is by clicking on the little cogwheel under the audio mixer here, and going to Advanced Audio Properties. And then under Mark's video, we can select Monitor to uh, Monitor Only. which is actually paying for my speakers, which you won't be able to hear in the video. Um, but that's how you bring audio into uh, the video. 
So we're going to close off that now. And that's that source selected. So let me go back to the camera and I'm going to add a new scene here. And I'm going to call it camera plus uh, browser. So we can also add a web page, a functional web page to our scene. So we've created a new scene, which means there'll be nothing on it. Again, we want to bring in a camera, which we'll do by doing exactly what we did before with an existing webcam. I'm going to place that. I'm going to place that just down here, and I'm going to add a uh, a browser source. So we'll do this by going to the plus icon and going to browser. I'm going to call this uh, events page. It's always good to name your stuff so you know what you can bring up when you want to show people things without cycling through half a million different scenes trying to figure out what it is you want to show somebody. So it's just going to bring up a simple browser to start off with. I'm going to change the width to 1920 by 1080 just so it scales to our canvas size. And I'm also going to put in the web page that I want to show, which is the events page for uh, Color 365. And hit OK. Again, we'll just bring the webcam over the top, just by dragging. So now we have our browser page in OBS. Now you can't really do much with it at the moment apart from drag it around. But uh, OBS has got a really cool feature where you can interact with a with the browser plugin. So do this by clicking on the uh, browser plugin. And you can right click and go to interact down here at the bottom. It's going to bring up this new window which they won't be able to see on the uh, on any of the streams or using the OBS virtual camera. But within this you can basically choose any of the settings up here so you can like scroll down the page uh, you can go to different uh, web pages um, it's just a great way of interacting with a browser without actually having to leave OBS Studio so you can focus more on your presentation side of things rather than switching between multiple different windows for your web pages and your presentations and videos and stuff so we'll close that for now. So we've created a few different scenes now uh, with a few different sources. And you can change this literally just by clicking on the scene. But you notice it's sliding to uh, the left and that's because in the scene transitions down here on the right, I have it set to swipe. You can also set it to fade. So when you switch, it'll just fade between them. And you can set the duration in milliseconds of the transitions. If I wanted like a really long swipe, I could set this to 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. And then when I do swipe here, it'll be a really slow swipe. So you can pull off some like really interesting effects in the scenes transition um, down here on the right. So that's a basic overview of the OBS interface. Uh, it's always also worth pointing out that you can save your scene selection here. So say for example you wanted to create multiple different presentations for different meetings with an OBS. You can go up to the scene selection here and you can export your scene collection. Um, so, you know, it'll save as a file which you can then import again at a later date. That way you're not got hundreds of different scenes here which you can get really overly confused about. So yeah, that's everything you need to know to get started with OBS Studio.